Good morning, folks, and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond at The Contrarian Trader, and it is October the 30th. Boo. Almost boo. Halloween. Happy Halloween. And it is 4.55 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, Tuesday. Let's kick things off with the pre-market activity. Then we're going to segue over and into members stock chart request which is where i review the symbols that our members submit for me to review as well as a couple of other symbols that we're watching so let's begin with the nasdaq and all these pre-market activity charts are going to be four hour charts unless i mention otherwise and you can see that we're up this morning about a little more than a half percentage point but remember we had a strong pre-market set up yesterday and the rally faded so as i mentioned to members last night we have a strategy for buying this market but it will not be on a morning where we have futures up on the nasdaq over a half percentage point it's just not how you see a capitulation in a correction i want to wake up i want to see the futures down a percentage point two percentage points that will be a situation where my contrarian antenna get up and I say okay now is the time to begin buying stocks when there's blood in the streets there's too many margin calls still going on volume to the downside is still way too high so while yeah sure might we rally today might we close positive absolutely it's quite possible my, my guess is is that we're gonna do exactly what we did yesterday and we are going to fade and close down on the day this is not how bottoms are made. The S&P 500 pre-market, it is up just shy of a half percentage point. Now, if I had to say something positive about the S&P is that we closed out yesterday down below support. And you can see buyers came in and they bid the shares of the S&P or bid the price of the S&P 500 off the lows of the session. And we are now at current above support. Again, we closed down below support. We are now trading back above resistance, which is a good sign. The question is, do we hold? And I do not believe that we will. But there are opportunities setting up here, and we will be looking to take advantage of them. And many of them are going to be in names that you really haven't heard about because the names that everybody's in love with, the Facebooks of the world, Amazons of the world, which I said back in August, were going to correct, and they have corrected. I don't think that they're done. When I say I don't think that they're done, I don't think that they're done going down. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones pre-market. The Dow is up, not as strong as the NASDAQ or the S&P 500. It's up about a third of a percentage point. Again, folks. We have a strong downtrend, and bottoms in a correction are generally not made with futures that are green in the morning. And we're starting to pull back already on the Dow. Now, you can see what's going on here, and this is disheartening for a lot of longs when they see this, but this is the value of knowing the charts, is that when we opened up for trade on Monday, we were attempting to establish a base from last week, which began on Wednesday. But soon after the market opened up, after we spiked higher, we reversed and broke down below this line in red here, which has been acting as a defense line. And when you get a breach of that support level, you see confidence begin to get rattled and of course, sellers moved in, shorts got brave, and they took the Dow, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 down. Now, this morning, what we're doing is we're rallying back in an attempt to try to recapture support. This is in all probability going to fade. Now, I, I've been fairly pessimistic thus far this morning on the market. And the only reason is because it's up in the pre-market. I'd rather see it down, to be honest with you. Why, again, it all goes back to hope and fear. People are hoping when they should be fearing, and this is pure manipulation 
of the futures market. This allows the talking heads on CNBC to go on unchallenged, talking up stocks with no accountability. And we're probably going to roll over here. And what I wanted to say earlier was that we are seeing some glimmers of hope. We are seeing some buying into the close. I spoke about this last night with members on Market Wrap, where we are seeing a topping action on the VIX, which is bullish for the S&P 500, because you saw bottoming action on the S&P 500 yesterday. It's hard to see right here. If there's a tail, a wick, a shadow, a bottoming tail, whatever you want to call it, yesterday on the S&P 500. So that's a sign that we're beginning to see some buyers step in and buy the market. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that if you're thinking about shorting this market, do not. This is not an invitation to go shorting the market simply because I'm, I'm a bit pessimistic about the pre-market activity. I think that on a higher level view, a daily view, uh, we are beginning to see signs of bottoming action and in all probability we are going to get a counter trend rally. Will that rally last? I doubt it and we will be looking to short that rally. Not until then. And of course, to take advantage of that rally, we will be looking to buy some leveraged ETFs, putting us along of the market as a whole, as well as some individual names. Let's take a look at bonds. This is the 10-year bond price. If it's pulling back, that means that yields are rising. Now, the 10-year yield so far this week on a daily closing basis, meaning Monday, is flat on the week, right? So no new highs, no new lows, not much price action. So what we're looking for here is a consolidation of these gains on the 10-year Treasury note and a breakout. Now, if we break down, well, then that means that yields are on the rise. And my hunch is, is that stocks will not accept that rise in yields very lightly. So watch this consolidation on the 10-year yield. Again, if we break out, yields are pulling back. If we break down on the 10-year Treasury note, bond yields are breaking out. Let's take a look at currencies and then precious metals. The dollar up yet again. I mean, really a strong dollar. So what's causing this? Well, you have money leaving stocks and where are they going? They're rotating into money market funds, right? So you're seeing a rise in the U.S. dollar. Angela Merkel over in Europe lost her power player position. She's been in office for about 20 years in Germany. So that's going to leave a, a void over in Germany and the EU as she will not seek re-election. And at current, the EU is at war with Italy economically and politically. So that's not good for the euro. So right now, the dollar is on the rise. We saw some topping action last bar. But if we break out, it's not going to be good for precious metals because that correlation, that inverse correlation that they've had in the past has returned. Let's go take a look at gold. Gold is down slightly. We're holding support. Let's call this a consolidation, but we were in a, in a pennant formation and we broke down yesterday morning, which is a bit of a concern with the dollar which is rallying. So uh, I would not go stepping in right now to buy gold. There will be an opportunity. We are along with the gold miners. There will be opportunities soon, but we do have events that are about to take place, whether it be the midterm elections, whether it be the jobs data coming out on Friday, whether it be whether or not the Federal Reserve raises rates. These are all major, major catalysts for the strength of the U.S. dollar, and the price of gold. Let's take a look at oil. Let's go with the Texas Light Suite spot price. 
All right, so oil obviously has been weak. We have a downtrend. Don't ask me why I pick a specific color any, at any one given time. All right, so oil remains weak. We are beginning to see the beginnings, perhaps, of stabilization here. We do have RSI, which is rising, or was rising, but now it has begun to roll over a bit. So I do not think that now is the time to go buying oil. You can see how we're, now we're getting lower highs again after showing a bit of strength. That's not what you want to see. You want to see a breakout. If we get a breakout on RSI, you could assume that we're going to rally up here to 68.14, perhaps, if we break out above this prior high right here at 67.80. So a bit of resistance here. We have a trading channel that's built up here. If you're thinking about buying oil, I would wait. I would wait until we get above this resistance level here. Far too much in terms of uh, uh, bearish price action in the commodity space. And while, yes, we're down in the, in the pre-market, it's not really the capitulation selling that you like to see. I wouldn't say there's blood in the streets this morning. Let's check out Bitcoin. We haven't spoken about Bitcoin in a long time. And it has done really nothing in a long time. Wow. There's not much to talk about here. I mean, there's not much going on. Uh, we're just flat. We're flatlined. I think the last time we spoke about Bitcoin was back here. We were forming a head and shoulder setup. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And we've neither negated that head and shoulder setup, nor have we broken the neckline. So we're just in the trading range here. Not much to do. Let's segue over and into some member stock chart request. All right, the first chart up is CERC, Seracor Inc., weekly chart. Now, I'm going to go over the weekly charts here because it's critical in a correction like this to identify where you have historical support. If you're relying upon daily charts right now to identify whether or not your stock or a particular index has hit a bottom, you're making a big mistake. You need to be leveraging multi-period charts. What does that mean? Forget the intraday charts. Forget the daily charts. You want to use the daily charts as your timing tool to identify after analyzing the weekly or monthly charts where you have historical support. If you reverse off of that historical support and you get a bullish reversal day on a daily chart, well then, okay, then perhaps it's time to put your toe back in the water. Now, getting back to CERC, we remain in a trading range. Now, here's the problem. While we're holding support, and relative to the rest of the market, holding up fairly well, meaning we haven't broken critical support yet, but in looking at our RSI and Stokes, we have broken down below the lower band of support on RSI. Stokes are putting in lower highs. And lower lows, you have both lines on Stokes trading down below the 50 level. We closed out the day yesterday down below the 50 period moving average, but yes, still holding on to support. Given current market conditions, I would have to say be very, very careful with this stock that there is a strong possibility that we break support if RSI and stochastics are any indicator. Price right now is not really implying that. It's implying that, you know, we may hold here. We hit support yesterday and bounced. Daily chart. So you can see here, they've attempted to rally it several days in a row now. Those rallies have faded. That's not good price action. But in the same breath, we have pulled back intraday and you see buyers come in and bid the shares up. So it's like a, a tightly wound spring. But again, going back to current market conditions, if I had to bet which way these shares are going to go, I would have to say to the downside. 
and it has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the particular stock, zero. You can see that down volume is beginning to rise. I would avoid these shares until, back to the weekly chart, until we break out above 485, I would be that disciplined. I would be that strict with entering a new position right now. If you're, if you're not going to be that disciplined and you're dead set on getting involved, at least wait until we close above these two moving averages, the 20 period moving average, which is declining, and it will take out the 200 period moving average, putting pressure on the shares. I would wait until we close above $4.40. The next chart up, Infinity Pharmaceuticals weekly chart. We broke out on Infinity back here in August, the week of August the 27th. We rallied, pulled back, we retested the breakout point. Good stuff. Rallied yet again. We're pulling back yet again to do a retest. Does this hold? We're not quite sure. If the going back to the market, if the market is any indicator of where stocks are heading right now, the probability of the support level failing is fairly good because we've seen it time and time again of late. Now, we were down yesterday. In fact, we did close down yesterday, but we closed with the lows of the day. We'll go to the daily chart in a moment. Ultimate oscillator still looks good. Rolling over on Stokes. Very, very weak. Daily chart. All right, so this downtrend here is... A bit overdone, we may get a pop on a short squeeze. Yesterday, we hit support at, let's call it 1.90. What was the low of the day? 1.92. So, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see a pop. The question is, do we end the trend of putting in lower lows and lower highs? So, to answer that question... We need to close any rally above $2.20 to $2.40 per share. If we can't do that, if we get stopped at those resistance levels, the probability of us rolling over is fairly good. So I would not go chasing any rally in the pre-market. It doesn't matter where a stock trades intraday. What matters is how it closes. Volume is below average, which is good. So would I be shocked to see a rally here? No. But my guess is, is that rally fades along with the rest of the market. LTS, Ladensburg, Thalman Financial Services, weekly chart. All right, I don't like this chart. And you may be saying, you know, Bob, you're always talking about RSI rising, Stokes rising, higher low on Stokes. Yes, yeah, so that all looks pretty good. They're going in the right direction. The problem is, is that price and volume action trump all. Now, it's early in the week. This is a weekly chart, so what are we going to do? We can't judge a week by a single day. I can judge the price action, though. And the price action that we're seeing so far this week is consistent with what we've seen in prior weeks. Topping action, sellers, selling strength. You have a lot of resistance up here at $2.99. So what happened yesterday? We rallied up and through three dollars per share what happened sellers moved in they took advantage of the liquidity and they sold strength that is not the type of price action i want to look to go putting on a long traded and in fact if you can get the shares this may be setting up for a short this is kind of what i'm looking for in a short because what is the market telling you let's make the assumption that this is Friday afternoon, final half hour of trade, and you're looking for shorts. What's your risk versus reward? Now, assuming on Monday or Tuesday the following week, we rally and close above $3 per share on volume, I stop out with a small loss. However, if these candlesticks are any indication of what I believe is happening, which is distribution and the shares begin to break down, well, you have far more 
downside potential to profit from from the short side rather than to the long side. Because again, the market is sending you a signal that these are sellers above, they're selling strength, they want the green entry on the trading platform to go away. They know they're not going to make money, nor do they want to make money. They just want out. What is their motivation? It could be a margin call. It could be anything. Daily chart. Same deal here. Resistance above at $3 per share. Absent its ability to close above that support level, I would be looking at these shares as a short. And if we close down below 2.80, it's game on to the short side with a stop right above that $3 per share level. And that is it for this morning, folks. If you watch this on YouTube, you know the deal. Give me a follow, like, subscribe. If you watch this on the website, enter your email address. Never miss my videos. Everybody have a profitable trading day and be well.